this outfit work so much better than the last outfit on me specifically. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the soft classic body type which is my body type, um, making it the, definitely the easiest one to begin with because I can give you really concrete examples. The soft classic is a classic body type with a romantic undercurrent. For those of you who are new here, Kibi body types are a system developed on the idea of yin to yang balance. So yang is sharp, long, narrow, sturdy, heavy sort of things. And yin is light, soft, delicate. Classic body type is slap bang in the middle, but of course there can't be such thing as a pure classic because everyone is either slightly soft or slightly sharp just because absolute nothingness you can't be neither of these things and what that means um i will show you in a little bit um i'll go through the features of my body specifically but soft classics in general have moderate length limbs they have moderate softness in the shoulders they are moderately soft in the chest and hips so they won't be overly voluptuous but they will have some softness there and as such soft classics look best in simple elegant lines they shine in minimal detail so the less detail there is the more beautiful they look and the more memorable they become so where a lot of people go wrong is they'll wear an outfit with lots of detail um thinking that that makes it a more elaborate or formal or um, memorable outfit and in fact it just makes them disappear if you're quite new to the concept of kibby types, I really suggest that you watch my previous video on the 10 kibby body types so that you kind of have a good understanding of what's going on here. I'm going to be explaining to you how I came to the conclusion that I am, in fact, a soft classic. When I first looked at the kibby types, I was pretty convinced that I was a theatrical romantic, as most people are, because I did the quiz. One thing I will say is it is best to do this um, in underwear or nothing rather than in sculpting workout gear like this because obviously it's going to compress you um, in various ways and it might not actually echo your real shape. But regardless you can see that I have curve in the chest here, you can see that I have curve in the hips but the thing is this is not the kind of curve that a theatrical romantic is going to have and we're going to come on to that in a second. If we start with my head proportioned to the rest of my body you can see that my head is kind of small for the rest of my body maybe moderate to small um my shoulders are very sloped but they're also quite sharp at the same time so i've got some tapering here i've got some slight tape slightly tapered shoulders um but mostly they are sloped my limbs are the real reason why i am a soft classic and not a theatrical romantic as you can see i've got really long arms and you can't see this right now but hopefully I'm gonna put myself here um, you'll be able to see that my legs are also long in proportion to the rest of my body now the curve here is somewhat not completely but somewhat generated by the bone rather than generated by the flesh because as you can see I'm probably at one of my thinnest points right now and you can still see this very clearly defined um, curve shape here which is not entirely a circle either there's some angles to it there's angles here mostly which is where it comes from the bone um so you couldn't describe this as a boneless curve now how do i know that i'm not a soft natural for example well the answer to that is very simple my shoulders are not broad in any way okay why not dramatic classic you've got long limbs you've got long and narrow hands and feet moderate to long vertical line well i know from here that i look best in waist emphasis rather than sharpness the curve that i have in my chest and in my hips is enough to lean on the soft classic side rather than the dramatic classic side and also i have that slope in my shoulders so my shoulders aren't particularly they don't have a lot of yang in there even though they've got that very slight bit of sharpness um they're mostly moderately soft even as i gain weight um for example this picture of me where i was half a stone bigger um, if not a stone bigger actually. I still collect the curve in my chest notably and in my hips which creates even more of an hourglass figure whereas a dramatic classic would be more likely to gain it in their waist and on their hips. So lastly before I show you the outfits let's go through the basic clothing lines for a soft classic. Soft classics are first and foremost a classic, so they are first and foremost balanced and moderate, which means that this is what they look best in. You can honour moderation through minimal detail, so that means real lack of prints. Um, and when you do have lack, of, and when you do have prints, they should be moderately to small in size. Um, they should also be rounded if you have any prints to honour that softness. 
classics look best in fabrics which are neither particularly shiny nor matte so somewhere in between classics are basically the goldilocks porridge of the body types um so basically not too sweet not too sharp not too shiny not too matte not too long not too short um not too soft not too hard um they are the goldilocks of body types even though their body types don't have to be literally symmetrical they do look best in outfits which are literally symmetrical so asymmetrical lines can be really distracting um so for example an asymmetric hem just wouldn't look good on a soft classic they look best in really clean lines and clean cuts there is a fun part of being a classic that if you change a couple of details you can create an effect really easily so if you wanted to look really girly and that was your style all you'd have to do would be to add one or two girly things like the color pink or a couple of bows or a couple of ruffles and you would look very girly rather than very elegant it's very easy to create these sort of effects and that's the same for like being edgy just wearing like a leather jacket is instantly going to look really quite edgy on you classic types are really overwhelmed by anything oversized and they can look sloppy very easily if the cuts aren't clean so if they were to wear even one or two natural lines they're going to start to look sloppy so to honor that romantic undercurrent you just need to add a couple of details of softness to your outfit so this could be a ruffled sleeve a rounded neckline waist emphasis is quite important um, but they don't need that same cinching that a romantic does so some waist definition would be fine for a soft classic they look good in draped fabrics like tulle anything slightly sheer anything slightly shiny also to, uh, to honor that romantic undercurrent length should be moderate to slightly short um but anything very short is going to look quite over on you I would highly recommend looking to Grace Kelly to find those really simple looks. Grace Kelly is such a style icon, especially for soft classics, as all of her looks are very streamlined and you can use almost any of her classic silhouettes um, recreated in a modern way and you're going to look amazingly elegant. For example, a flared skirt is going to look really good. Okay, that was a quick overview. Onto the outfits. I often use this outfit when I'm making TikToks about soft classic first thing that I like about this outfit, it instantly gets rid of a misconception that any type of the romantic undercurrent can't wear trousers. This is obviously nonsense. These work particularly well because they've got minimal detail. They are high-waisted and they hit me right on the waist. The trousers also work well because they are not overly tight in the leg, you can't see. And the fabric is slightly soft as well. It's not got a sheen to it, but it has got a slight softness to it, so it's not overly harsh. This top is a great version of a t-shirt for a soft classic, rather than something look very straight and sharp, which is often what we see in a t-shirt. But this works well because it has a rounded neckline. And if I come a bit closer, you can see that that neckline has some feminine details, which are very subtle. So it's got some lace here, and it's got a bow here, and also the sleeves aren't too long they're just little cap sleeves something that i would be aware of when creating suit like outfits is i wouldn't put a blazer with this unless it was literally part of a matching set because little differences are so noticeable on classic so if you had two slightly different colors it's going to be so obvious on you whereas it wouldn't on a different type but it will look like you are mismatched so unless it is an exact suit i wouldn't put two different types of things together so i would go for a completely different jacket altogether obviously i wouldn't wear this to work but if this was like a casual outfit i would prefer to put on a leather jacket for example um because it's so obviously not meant to be a pair with the with the trousers it looks a little bit more intentional than wearing a slightly wrong colored blazer the next stereotype is that you can't wear fun outfits as a classic i just think that's so wrong because this outfit is so cute I'm just going to take the hat off because it's ruining my hair. I've actually got the gist. The reason that I like this outfit, outfit first of all is that there is one colour thread all the way through. Soft classics and classics in general do struggle with like lots of patterns and lots of prints which comes with multiple colours. Um, it can be quite confusing and quite distracting. This is my favourite coat at the moment. I got it in Zara quite recently. Um, the one thing that would make this coat better would be if it had some sort of belt um, or like waist emphasis built in but it is soft enough that it works especially when i pair it with an outfit like this the reason berries and hats in general i think work quite well on soft classic the berry works well because it is a soft fabric it's rounded you see it's like instant roundness near the face this skirt works well because it's got if you couldn't say it's got minimal detail because it's got that print but the print is a moderate size and it's also not near my face so if you keep the print as far away from my face as possible it's going to work a lot better um, so near my face instead we have this rounded neckline which i've already talked about on as that romantic undercurrent it's got the plain black 
and it's also got the plain pink as well and the fabric is very soft so it's not harsh against my skin at all and also the coat has minimal detail it does have these contrasting buttons here which are so noticeable whereas they wouldn't be on a different type and also the coat you can't see but it's not full length it's of a moderate length so that works great on me as well and also the skirt is high waisted again providing that little bit of waist definition and it also counteracts the coat which is a slightly long line it's below the knee um to have it with a shorter skirt it just creates that sense of balance a little bit better coming back to the original outfit in my the start of this video the reason that this outfit works so well is well there's many reasons the first thing i want to say is this top has become an absolute staple in my wardrobe i got it from hollister quite recently um it's the multi-weight eyelash wrap i include one in almost every single one of my personal shopping things that i create because I think they suit almost anybody, but it's particularly good for me because it's the minimal detail, it's got waist emphasis, and it's got a very soft, the thing about wrap tops is they've got a very soft v-neck, so it's not too harsh, um, and it's also slightly rounded as well, so it's got elements for almost everyone, but perfect for a classic, it's very blended. Um, it ends at my waist, but not too high, which often looks really bad. Um, it's of that mi moderate mid-waist, and it goes perfectly with these jeans which are also quite a new purchase i struggle so much with jeans as a soft classic i'm pretty sure other classics will relate the key with the classic remember is moderation so that slightly heavy that slightly heavy denim with that slight curve in the jean is going to work best and that's a really hard thing to find i now have three dresses to show you the first is this little black dress obviously you can't see the whole thing this is one of the most requested items that i have seen uh, on in my comments sections um, it's got a rounded neckline which of course honors the romantic undercurrent no one does a little black dress better than a classic type because the thing is instantly minimal detail and you're just gonna shine in it so I have quite a few little black dresses um, for different occasions because nothing makes a bigger impact than something simple and with clean lines but this dress works so well because it's got very subtle structure so it's not just like a sack <laughs> um, it's got really good waist emphasis built in it's got short sleeves everything is covered but you can still see the shape um, so modesty is um, one of those things that's quite important for a soft classic because like moderate length it's got a slight slit in it but it's not overly high so it doesn't look so um, overtly sexy which it can do very easily as a classic like it's very easy to lean into the overt side rather than elegance like i say all those little details they just are so obvious on a classic now this dress is not a particularly well-made dress in any way um it's a new look i got it from a charity shop it's super cheap but the thing about kibby is it's about the overall impression did you notice that of course you didn't <laughs> okay so why i do like this dress now we've gone through everything i hate about it <laughs> I think this is a great party dress for a soft classic because it's got minimal detail except for the sequins it's not got lots of prints the sequins are slightly much so it definitely looks like a formal glamorous dress it doesn't look like a simple dress it looks like a party dress but on a different type this might not look like such a party dress because it's quite modest there's not a lot showing um it's not particularly short it comes maybe a couple of inches above the knee um, but a lot of party dresses are like this short um, so it still looks quite elegant on me because it's a moderate length for a party dress. I like it because it has waist emphasis built in. Um, it's a bodycon dress, but different to other bodycon dresses, when you take this and you put it on the hanger, you can see the shape built into it so clearly, and that's what we mean by curve emphasis, not just that it's clingy fabric. So I've got another dress which is straight on the hanger, I'll put it on for you in a second. Um, and you can see that it doesn't emphasize my curves in the same way um, it's kind of straight here and there's no clinging to my body in the same way whereas this has my particular shape built into it which is what you want so that's what i like about this i also like the sequins because it does add a little bit of uh, romantic yin detail to the dress so sequins are rounded they're slightly shiny um so it's got that slight feminine edge to it which is perfect for a soft classic now if you look at these two dresses side by side, this is the dress I was just talking about, but if you really look at the waist, you can see that it's not just not built to cling, it does because um, that's all it can do, but if you look really closely, it gives me a much straighter figure than the other dress because it just doesn't honour my personal life. Which is not to say that I hate this dress, I don't mind it, but I think you can kind of see the difference. Okay, as we're working our way up, we're onto my ball gown. 
I have many a ball gown, but I think this one is great for a soft classic because it draws very much on the Grace Kelly. <laughs> there are so many things that are so great about this dress. First of all, it does have a print to it, but as you can see, it's very subtle. It's a very subtle blended print. It's very rounded. It's a yin dominant print. It's got waist definition and emphasis without breaking the line and the waist emphasis therefore isn't like a chunky bell which would break me up as a classic it keeps it all very simple and minimal the flared skirt is very grace kelly <laughs> it's got that yin element to it by being a skirt being slightly poofy but it's got this stiff fabric um which keeps it very balanced and also it's a moderate length so it's not a floor length gown and it's not very short it's just below the knee obviously by no means was this a comprehensive list of all the outfits that you can wear in the world as a soft classic but i feel like this should have given you um some examples of how you can apply the logic from your day-to-day to the biggest days of your life. I really hope this has helped. If you have any further questions about being a soft classic, please leave them in the comments. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to learn more about Kibby, more about how to actually apply Kibby body types to your body and your outfits and how to ultimately end the war with your wardrobe. Thank you so much. I will see you next time.